Hi everyone and welcome back to What's Up Wednesday. Excited to be back in to share a keto meal with you guys. So go grab something to eat so you can sit down with me while I eat, read some scriptures, chit chat with all of you guys, and possibly even tell a story. If you are new to this channel, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that notification bell, then you'll be notified whenever I upload new videos. Share around this channel to help it to grow. Shoot me any and all comments down below, and definitely shoot me a thumbs up. Let's get munching, everyone. Happy Wednesday, everyone. What's up with all of you guys? Hope everybody is doing well, and I hope you are enjoying all of these keto videos. Now, I didn't do a recipe today. What we have is that Quest Keto Pizza. I haven't had that for a while, so I'm excited to have that. I've got some guacamole here that I'm going to have with my Quest chips. I've got some baby cucumbers with bacon bits on it, some ranch dressing. I've got a um, dessert here I made uh, with the cream cheese and a yogurt. I mix the two and we've got some of the uh, powdered sugar in there. The powdered, um, I think it's, I don't want to say stevia. It's the powdered, um, I can't remember. Uh, but it's like a powdered stevia. And then it's got the Lily chocolate chips in it. And we're going to put some whipped cream in it. I've got a Earl Grey decaffeinated tea here with some sugar-free creamer. And one of the black cherry American Clear Waters and just a cup here with some ice. It is cold, but I like it on ice. So yeah, this is what I'm going to have. It equals out to, let's see here, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I've got exactly 20 net carbs here, you guys. I'm a net carber. I always deduct the dietary fiber or any of the alcohol sugars when they're done with the proper sugar, the erythritol, uh, monk fruit, stevia, you know, those ones are all ones that you can deduct off of the carb and um, any dietary fiber you can deduct off of it and you get what's called a net carb. So of course, this is a 20 carb diet, 20 or less carbs a day, but um, some people do total carb and don't deduct that, which is much harder to do. I've always done it the net, so I do the deduction. So I'm probably getting some days 30 to 40, but with the deductions, it brings it to the 20. I'm always in a great state of ketosis unless I mess up or I try a new product and some of them kick you, some of them don't. They say, a lot of them that say keto friendly aren't always keto friendly. You want to really look at those ingredients on there. Um, but I've learned a lot. I mean, I've been keto this November. I know it's only February right now, but in November, it'll be eight years for me. But this um, April, I believe it is April, it'll be six years maintenance. And I've been able to keep this weight off. I was, uh, my heaviest weight was 308 to 311. I just can't remember, but I was over 300 when I started. <clears throat> and I lost over 170 plus pounds. I got down to 139, my goal weight. And I did that in about 15 months. And that's usually where I sit. But since going through premenopausal, uh, you ladies will totally understand that. It's a lot harder for me to keep my weight in the 130s. I'm always ranging between 145 and 150 now. But you know what? I actually kind of like my weight a little bit more up. It makes my hips look a little better. Uh, the butt rounds out a little bit more. Uh, but I will not let myself get over that. And it's not that I let myself get there. It's no matter what. You can read about it. When you're in premenopause, menopausal, our age and all that, I'm 47. Um, you know, it is a lot harder. Uh, it doesn't matter. Like, you know... You can eat exactly the same way, and you're always going to put that little bit of weight on. Uh, some people will. Um, I got to get back to the gym. I haven't been to the gym in a little bit. I got to get back to the gym because that definitely helps out. But working out is very important to work out and stuff, especially 
uh, women in premenopausal, menopausal, all of that. You definitely want to do that. But like I said, I mean, it's only a matter of pounds. Um, I'm usually like my average is like 146. That's like my average right there. So I'm not worried about a few pounds like that um, when it makes me feel a lot better. All my clothes still fit and everything, but it did seem to make my body look a little bit more shapely. I think when I look back at photos now, I was a tad bit thin on the thin side um, for my taste. You know, I mean, I'm growing up now in the time where back in the time I grew up when I was born in the 70s and the 80s, it was very sexy for women to be so skinny, they looked anorexic. And now I lose all this weight and I had a magnet that said that my luck, I'll lose all the weight. And uh, it says, uh, what did that magnet say? Um, just my luck, I will lose all the weight and fat will be in. Um, it was something like that. I can't remember, it rhymed though. Um, but it was something like that, like losing weight and then all of a sudden fat will be in. Uh, guys do like girls a little bit on the thicker side nowadays. They do in the 2000s. They just like, it was like like the late night, like early 2000s to uh, now that men do like women a little bit thicker. So I do like myself a little bit thicker, but we're talking about just a matter of pounds. Um, but like I said, I've been able to maintain that even with this, you know, going through premenopausal and all that. And things are slowly but surely even changing more. I meet with my OBGYN here coming up next week. Uh, today is the 7th. You guys will get this video tomorrow. Yesterday was my good friend Jennifer Kozlinski's birthday. If you guys don't mind wishing her a happy belated birthday down in the comments, that would be great. Happy birthday, honey. I know I did text you yesterday, but I hope you had a wonderful day. I know it was Monday. You were working. But us ladies at that age, right, we don't even want to celebrate a birthday. I don't know if you do, but I, I really could care less to celebrate birthdays. When I hit 30 years old, I remained 30, and that was it. I never got any older. So, but anyways, yeah, if everybody could wish um, Jennifer a happy birthday, that would be great. And um, like I said, it's going to be late. You guys won't get this video until tomorrow, the 8th. I pre-record all these videos, but her birthday was on the 6th. And I am not going to tell you her age. Well, actually, I will. She's 32. So, um, well, she looks very young and wonderful for her age. Um, but anyways, we're really close in age, me and her. So, but anyways, we're going to get started here. We're going to eat, but we're going to read our Bible verses. Um, it was kind of cool. I did read the last one on Monday's video that you guys would have got on comfort. And boy, I sure do need the comfort right now. And my family does. I did lose my most favorite cousin died. She was 52 years old. I'm not going to go over the details and all of that, but we did lose her I believe it was on the 5th. It was on Sunday. And when you get this, it's going to be Wednesday. So today's Tuesday. It was just this last Sunday. Um, she did pass away. Uh, she was my most favorite cousin. And uh, definitely I'm asking for prayers for the mother. Uh, her dad already passed, but her mom is, you know, having a hard time with it. My family is having a hard time, especially my mom, because my mom helped out with her. Um, taking care of her and stuff like that because my cousin was a little towards the end there needed help and stuff like that um, so my mom helped out a lot so it was very hard on my mom and dad um, helping out and always being there um, I'm really sad because my cousin asked me a few months ago to come over and see her and I just got busy with things life gets so busy and I didn't get a chance to go over and see her so um, I don't want to get too much into it because it makes me emotional to think about that because she is my favorite cousin and I feel sad that I didn't get over there you guys time is so short don't you know, go visit people, take advantage. And I knew that she wasn't doing well and I should have got over there to see her. I should have. Um, growing up, I did so much with her. But yeah, just knowing that I didn't get over there makes me sad. My mom keeps saying, she knows you loved her. Um, I loved her dearly. I'm just really sad that I didn't get over there to see her. You know, I guess I hope that there was more time, you know. I mean, she wasn't given any kind of time limit, but she just wasn't, you know, the healthiest and all of that. So just asking for prayers to, for the comfort piece, you know, and all of that. But it was nice that I read that verse. Just, um, I did the video, I believe on Saturday and she passed away on Sunday. So it's almost like God was giving me that comfort right there, having me read that verse on comfort. So yeah, if you guys could please keep us in your prayers, that would be wonderful. We will have a funeral, I believe this week on it. And I'm, you know, sad to see her that way. I wish I would have went over and seen her. I mean, I did see her not too long before that, but it's, you know, been a few months and she did. We talked on the phone one day for like two hours and she asked me to come over and see her and I didn't get over. So I do feel really, really bad inside. And, um, you know, just like when my dad died, something was telling me to tell your dad you loved him that night. And I was trying to get my kid home. He was three at the time, my son, 
Dylan and we had had a long day at my aunt's house, a big party for my grandparent, my grandmother and my uncle. And it was also my dad's birthday. So we had a lot going on. I was just tired. I needed to give Dylan a bath. He was only three and a half. He was getting cranky and all that. So something was telling me though, tell your dad you love him because he passed away that night. And I always told my dad I loved him. And I, you know, lived with that regret. I still do, but I had to go to counseling and stuff for it. So now I kind of have that guilt again why I didn't get over there to see her. Cherish your loved ones, you know, make time for them. Definitely make time for your loved ones and your friends. Make time for your friends as to, you know, as well, you guys. It's important to keep your friends and family, um, you know, well, first keep God right up there top. You know, God, it should be number one. And then, of course, your family and friends, you know, just make sure you're keeping in contact with people and, and you know, because life is short. It really is. Today's verse, we are on commitment. Commit uh, your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act, making your righteousness shine like the dawn, your justice like the noonday. Psalms 37, 5 and 6. Dear God, I've taken a step forward. It seems to be a risky step. Many told me it couldn't succeed, but I believed that. I'm doing a part of you, your plan and purpose for me. Therefore, I'm calling on your words in Proverbs 16, 3, which tells me that if I commit whatever I do to you, your plans will succeed. Thank you for your promise, Lord. Amen. That's great. You know, asking God to help you guide your path. Uh, there's something I'm going to be trying to do. I want to try to uh, paint and sell uh, silicone babies. I would like to start a business on that because everybody says I'm so good at it. Uh, so I would like to order the eBay and Amazon babies, paint them and sell them um, to try to make, you know, a little extra income for us. And it's something I very much enjoy. So yeah, I, I'm feeling God, you know, he blessed me with these hands and it's something I want to use them. You know, I really do. A lot of people have a hard time painting those silicones and they're like, you're so good at it. So it's something I'm going to get into and do. I will let you guys know when I get into that. I'll show you the uh, eBay account and all that when I when I get to that point. But asking for prayers for that too, that I can succeed in that. And I do feel God pulling me in that direction because he blessed me with hands. You know, be, I'm, very, I'm very artistic. So he did bless my hands. And so I'd like to use them, you know, and, and better, you know, ourselves financially and all of that. So I would love the prayers. Father God, I can't imagine what it must must have been like for you hanging on that cross for my sins. And yet you didn't complain. Instead, you committed yourself into the hands of your father. You must have trusted him more than anything. I am not dying, Lord, but I want to commit my life into the hands of my heavenly father. Thank you for sending Jesus to show me the way. Amen. That's Luke 23, 46. And you know, that's another thing that Jesus hanging on the cross for our sins. I mean, come on, we were not worthy of such an act to go through such a horrific death for us. And it was even worse because it was for all the sins prior, the sins current. And I mean, at that point, and then, you know, in the future, all of us, what we do, we fall short of the glory of God daily. And yet God loves us so much. And that's why he sent his son to die so that we could have that eternal life if we believe. And yet Jesus never even complained, never complained hanging up there at all. And at any time could ask the angels to take him down. He couldn't take any more and that was it. But he committed himself to this death, rose again, now descended to heaven with his, you know, his father and is ready one day to come back and get us. And we get eternal life because of that eternal life. You know, if any one of us could do something that amazing, boy, could any of us send our child to do something like that? No. So we need to just give ourselves to God as much as we can. And I'm saying that even to myself. Even I have been slacking on my reading, spending time alone with God. I did that so often and I need to get back to that because it definitely makes your life feel different when you're not giving it to God first. Always asking God a simple thank you for giving me life. Thank you for waking me up. Spend some time alone. I mean, even five minutes when God seems like to him a, a lifetime with him. You know, God just appreciates that so much. Let's give what we can for him because he's done so much for us. Dying on a cross, I couldn't even imagine. Sweet Father, thank you for your children. Or thank you um, for the children you have given me. A whole crew of unique individual gracing and embracing the world. Boy, we do have a lot of children in the world, right? And I love even my silicone babies. I really do. God has blessed me, but he's blessed me with a wonderful son. My son, Dylan, is absolutely amazing. The best son a mother could ask for. I'm so proud of you, Dylan. If you're watching this, I'm very, very proud to be your mother. Very proud of you. Um, I commit each one of them to you, holy God, and to the word of your grace. Build them up. I pray and give them an inheritance among all those who are sac who are sacrificed, who ha are sent. Why can't I see this? Sent or sacred? Oh, sacrificed. 
sorry, inherited among all those who are sanctified. Amen. Acts 20, 32. And then it says, Lord, you know, I have trouble with commitment. Keep me on the right road, fully committed to you. Amen. I like that. And this was on commitment. I do pray all the time for my son and my stepsons um, and, you know, my family to have a great walk with God. I do pray because I, I my son does have a good walk with God, but I pray that he have his, you know, they have their salvation right so they can make it to heaven because there's so much more than just saying, I believe. You know, you can believe all you want, but if you're not walking right with God, there is not a place in heaven for you. We need to be right with the Lord. Get right because anytime, I mean, it's showing signs. I said it in my last video on Monday. We're showing signs of you know, end times, Jesus is going to return at any time. He's coming like a thief in the night and we have to be ready or we're left behind. Or like my cousin passing away, you know, that quickly, life can be over that quickly. And there's never, you know, no more chances after that. There just isn't. So I am trying really hard to get my walk, you know, better with God and spending more time with him by starting my day, going through my day and ending my day with life's man through the Holy Bible. Read it, study it, and get a great personal relationship with Jesus. He is the one that died for us and we can't get to his father without going through him and his death and knowing all that and getting close to God, spending time alone you know, he is our best friend. Even if we have to yell, even if we're mad, God can take it. He's a, you know, a, a big God. He can take it. We serve an almighty, merciful God. His mercies are new every day and he forgives us every day, especially with the true heart. And he knows our true heart. And worry only about you. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. I heard that last night when I was going to sleep. I listened to those um, I-N-R-A, I believe they are, um, on the Bible and all that and talking. They were talking about, you know, don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Don't worry if your life sucks at the moment and you're, you know, you know, God's putting you through, you know, when you go through things, we're going through for a reason, you know, we're going through trials and tribulation. God's testing us, testing our faith and all of that. Don't worry about if somebody else's life is so much more great and they're not walking right with God and why their life is better. Well, they're, if they're not walking great with God, they're obviously walking with the devil and the devil's making them believe, you know, making their life so great because he gets to pull them to hell. But us that walk with God, the devil's going to still kill and destroy, do everything he can because he doesn't have us coming to hell then. And so he's going to try to destroy our life as much as he can, you know. So when we go through those tough times, losses like I'm going through right now, tough times, financial needs, all of that, your own health, all of that different things, know that God is right there and he's going to get you through it, but he's testing you to see how strong and how much you're going to continue to trust him. And I will continue to trust my Heavenly Father. I will. I will. All right. Let's get eating, you guys. Can't wait to dig into this quest. I haven't had a quest pizza for a while. And I think this is the Meat Lovers. And I added some um, bacon bits. the uh, Just the ones you put on a salad, the crispy ones. I added that to it while I was cooking it. Some Parmesan cheese. And yeah, it looks really, really good. So I'm excited to have that. I might even have some of this guac on it. But the guac was for my chips. So we're going to go ahead and try this. I haven't had it for a while. Mmm. Yum. So how is everyone? I hope all you guys are doing well. Hope you had a nice, you know, are having a nice week. Had a nice weekend. Everybody is uh, staying safe and everything and giving their self to God. Important. This one is so good, the black cherry. I love the wild cherry. You can't get it anymore in those cans. I can never find, I can find the strawberry, but not the wild cherry. I am having the loaded taco. There's a few left in there. The loaded taco Quest protein chips. I love these chips. I thought I would dip it with the guac. Mm, mm, mm. Very, very good. But yeah, if you guys need any help with the keto diet, I do help. I've helped many people uh, for free. If you just come into my email, it I'll throw it up here on the screen here. Um, but also it's linked in my box. If you need any help, just go into my email and um, I'll be more than help you to, you know, happy to help set you up on a plan. I just need to ask you a few personal questions. But again, talk with your doctor and a nutritionist because I am not a doctor or a nutritionist, even though anybody can school me and I will school you right back. I know my keto. I really, really do. So that being said, not everybody can eat all those keto friendly products. Some can, some can't. It just depends. You got to test your own body and all of that. But um, I would love to help you and, you know, get set up on a plan and to start getting healthy. I love the keto way of life. And this, I know if you're new to this channel, you think, wow, it's a big meal. It's, I eat one meal a day. Oh, man. So I try to get all my calories in one meal. Sometimes I do two, but basically for two years, I've been doing one meal with the exception of once in a while, I'll turn it to two. Like sometimes if I'm like going, because I'm going through premenopausal, sometimes I really need to eat. 
a week before my period, I get a little hungry. So then I might have two meals and a little snack, still keeping it within the calories. Um, but I haven't had to do that every month, but I'm noticing as I'm getting older that, yeah, the uh, uh, mood swings are setting in and everything. So. But basically, I'm always doing one meal. This one is really good. This is the Meat Lovers. It has ham, bacon, pepperoni. And I believe that's all of it. And I know it already had bacon on it, but I wanted those little bacon bits just for the crunch. Like on the cucumbers, yeah. But yeah, I'd love to help you if you want some help. I've helped close to 4,000 people. And I know there's more because some people I don't even tell you. You know, they just watch your channel, watch your video. I've taught a lot. I did lots of videos on keto and stuff like that. You can just go into my playlist under... Um, Keto style muffins and recipes under the treat, keto treats, and under miscellaneous. I've, I've done a lot of teaching in there too. So I know I've had people come to me after they lost all their weight and then told me, thank you for your videos. So I love to help. I'm trying to think of a certain story I could tell. Maybe I could tell a story on me and my cousin since. She's passed. Maybe I could tell you some stories because we did everything together when I was younger. Hopefully I won't get too emotional. But we did how we did everything together. Um, I'm 47. She was 52 when she passed. So she is older than me, but we just got along so, so good and did so much together. Even when I was pregnant with my son, we were spending so much time together. But um, she, I just remember the nights I would go over there and spend the night at my aunt's house when she was living at home. Then she got her own place. But I would go over there pretty much every weekend because I worked during the week. I worked some weekends, but I would go over there as much as I could to see her. She was like the one I hung out with the most out of all my friends and everything. I hung out with her the most. And me and my brother, as my brother got older, my brother Tommy, he started to join us. Oh, I did. I had the one sitting right here. <laughs> um, I have a nap in here. He, uh, my brother started joining us too, and we just had so much fun. She introduced me to a game called Nightmare. It's a board game, but you play it with the TV, the DVD. And then they came out with other ones, like sequels and, or, um, yeah, like sequels. Uh, just different ones of all the different people in it. If you've never seen it before, definitely look into it. You might have to look online for it because it's hard to get it now. It's an older game, but it was called Nightmare. And it's a fun game to play. And I remember this time we were playing and um, you got to part where you have to stare at each other and try not to blink. And I swear, like they said, while the time is on, try not to blink. Like he, it was on the screen for like a good minute or so. My cousin just didn't blink even after it ended. You know, I would blink or my brother would blink. We couldn't last on her. She would just keep going. Like, she could not blink. I don't know how she did it. Every time she beat us on that part. If she was the one that we would be against. She was so good at that. I remember when I got Minnie. She's really good with dogs. She's always had a dog. I'm sad for her dog... Charlie right now, because Charlie's without her now. But I remember when I got Minnie, I showed my cousin. My cousin said, oh, she's going to, you know, she's very cute. She's going to be a good dog, but she's going to be really prissy. Boy, my cousin called that one. She was right. Minnie is very prissy, very needy, very girly, very... Can't touch us, can't do that, can't get dirty. I don't know how my cousin did that. My cousin was just really good with dogs. But she introduced me to the movie um, 
Eight seconds with Luke Perry. Luke Perry's gone too. Rest in peace. Um, but with that Luke Perry, and even though it's a sad movie, I'm going to watch it in honor of her. Sorry, guys. Um, but we just did so much together. We did. And when I got pregnant with my son, I remember his dad came over to get me. I was over at my cousin's when he came to get me Valentine's Day to take me out in 1998. And he left there and told me he had to go to work and stuff. And I found out he lied. But the story was he came back because I was very upset. And I told him he was lying and that I wasn't going to be with him. And put my child through that and that he wouldn't be a good dad for him. And he came over. He was fighting with me down below. We were in the apartments, but down downstairs by the door. My brother Tommy came out to say, leave my sister alone. You're mean. You're going to end up, you know, hurting that baby, something. I mean, he wasn't hurting me, but just the stress he was putting on me. And he said, you know, he yelled at my brother something, chased after my brother. My brother was 15. This guy was like late 20s, and he ran it right after my brother. My brother was only 15 at the time. But he was just a bad guy. He was never in my son's life. I never, well... I, should say, I shouldn't say I never let him because he never even tried. But if he would have, I would have fought that because he was not a good dad. I didn't know that when I met him, he sure had me convinced he was a wonderful guy. I was young and stupid. But even my cousin, was another thing she saw through that and said, Angel, he's just not good for you, you know? She said, you deserve so much more and you'll be a really good mom. You don't need to worry about it, you know? My cousin was just, she was the greatest. She would watch my videos. Sorry. Um, she would watch my outfit videos. She always did. Always watch my outfit videos. And I would put them up on Facebook too. And she would comment. She would call to give me advice and stuff. On Even though my cousin was more tomboyish. But she would give me advice and stuff like that. And I never, ever got mad at her or anything. And she used to always tell me, you're so good at fashion. You're so good at what you do. And she watched every one of my videos. People just don't get close to cousins like that. They just don't. You know, it'd be like close to sisters. It was like she was my sister. It would be more like a sister. And I didn't have a sister, I had all brothers. And she would do anything for me. She got me business doing nails. There isn't nothing she went to done for me. She used to always pay for everything, food for us. We'd go over there and have, you know, snacks and food and watch movies and play games. And we just had so much fun. The last few days I've been kind of in shock. You know, it's, it's, I guess it still hasn't hit me yet. I know when we go to the funeral, that's when it's going to hit hard. I would like to get up and say something because I was so close to her. But at the end, in the last few years or whatever, not that we drifted apart because we still talked once while stuff, but it wasn't the same. We didn't spend enough time together. I'm older now, you know, I have a family and I don't have time like when you're a kid, when you don't have any responsibilities and stuff, you know. But she asked me a couple months ago, please come and see her, she missed me. I wish I would have come and seen her. Maybe it wasn't a real good subject to talk about, but all I know is she was the best. And I hope she's enjoying herself in heaven. I miss you and I'll see you again.
so yeah i just figured we'd talk about something else because it's hard to talk about that I know one thing I would like is to take her dog, but we can't have more than one dog here. I wish I could take her dog for her because Charlie really liked me a lot and I, I worry for Charlie too. Because Diane was such a good dog owner. But yeah, let's let's just talk about happy stuff because it's it's really hard on me. We've got the Super Bowl coming up. Not my team. I'm a Viking fan. I was proud though that our Vikings did get a lot farther this year. I think we have a good coach. I think a couple of years with that coach, I think we're going to be doing really good. Got a new coordinator. My my husband said today a good one. Because that's what I think some of the problem was is that coordinator we had. So anyways, we're getting, got Super Bowl coming up. I know my um, husband will be watching it. Is it the uh, Seagulls? Or Eagles, I mean? Babe? Freeland. Honey. He might be sleeping. Babe. Oh, I didn't know your door was closed. Who, what are the Super Bowl teams? The Eagles, I thought, and who? Oh, Eagles and the Chiefs. <laughs> All you guys are probably on there yelling to me, the teams. I would say out of the two who I would want to win, I'm going to say the Eagles. Yeah, let's, I'm going to root for the Eagles. But yeah, we got that coming up. We got Valentine's Day coming up. Love day. Oh gosh, that just made me think of something with my cousin. Because it was that Valentine's Day when we were over there. When that happened, I was pregnant with my son now. I was hurting so bad because I was going through that. My cousin was so nice. She got me something really nice. She just recently made me a picture. I don't know if I showed you guys that. I will in another video. She drew me a picture. It said Angel's Heavenly Nails. And she drew like some polishes and stuff. But yeah, we got Valentine's Day coming. Love Day. That's my parents' wedding anniversary. They got married on Valentine's Day. So I have to get something for them. Um, how are you guys doing? Like, are there people out there? I never know. Are there people out there doing keto that watch my channel? Leave me a message down below and tell me if you try some of my recipes that I've made. I'd like to know. Um, I, uh, this year I, I do that cream cheese dish, dessert, but this time I added a vanilla yogurt in with it. Same recipe. It's just a uh, two ounces of cream cheese the uh, swerve, that's what it is. The powdered swerve. And um, I would add fruit in it. 
and, and some of the chocolate chips. I didn't have the fruit. So I just added the yogurt into it. Same thing, one yogurt, the two good yogurt, the vanilla with the chocolate chips. And I'm going to put the whipped cream on with the two ounces of cream cheese. And then the, excuse me, a tablespoon of the swerve. I definitely know that I'm in shock because I don't even, I can't believe I've been able to keep my videos up this week. I think God is trying to help me to cope and it helps to do the videos. Because you got to keep going. That's the sad thing about life and death. Life doesn't stop. It keeps going. Keeps going, and we have got to keep going with it. We can't let go. We just watched the movie the other day, Eye for an Eye, with Sally Field. I don't know if you guys seen that one. Uh, Kiefer Sutherland. She loses her daughter in the beginning. And the husband was saying, we need to keep going. You know, life doesn't stop. We have to keep going, even though she lost her daughter. As sad as it is, it's true. That's just crumbs there. We can't stop just because it's a death. You know, a lot of people, it's hard though, and they want to just give up. But there's where we have to grab God's strength. And know that, that's what the comfort's there, that we don't live forever. Everybody's got to die. We're born. And after we're born, we begin to die, basically. But live your life to the fullest. You know, you don't want to live like that. Just saying we all got to die one day. But what's nice is Christians. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope I didn't have something on my nose there. That would have been embarrassing. I hope I didn't. <laughs> um, knowing as a Christian, though, that we have eternal life. So when our shell goes under the ground, what carries us. Our soul is what makes us, it carries us, is we'll never truly die. We get to go on and go to heaven and live forever and ever and ever. This is the sugar-free whipped cream. My husband got the sugar-free one because he's doing keto. And he uses too much whipped cream, so he said he had to get the sugar-free one. I don't care for this one because it's got the circles in it. But I'm out of the regular. And um, I only use a little bit, so it won't kick me. Mm. This is so good. I guess that's a vanilla yogurt. Two ounces of cream cheese. A tablespoon of the swerve. Chocolate chips mixed through it. And then a little bit of whipped cream. It's a great dessert. Mmm, that tastes so good with that vanilla yogurt. I love anything that is to do with cheese, cream cheese. So it's like a cheesecake dessert here. Cheesecake was always my favorite. Oh, any desserts that, you know, you can have my, my brother's future wife, uh, Amanda, makes really good keto desserts. Cheesecake. With the crust. And let me tell you, it is so rich and sweet, because it's the only thing about cheesecake. I would always get it with me and my son, but we could only eat a couple bites of it, because it's so rich. We're not sweet eaters. We were salty eaters, but we loved cheesecake. That was always our thing. And every time I bought cheesecake, I had to get a second slice from rice. I'd always get the two-pack so we could have a piece together. But she made it, and I guess just because I don't eat real sugar, and it wasn't real sugar, but it was so rich. I'm just like, oh, my God, it's so good. But I'm like, I get some going, oh, it's so sweet, though. Hard to believe that it was keto, but it was. I mean, she's not going to lie. My brother is like the king of keto. 
Robin, it's his wife. And a lot of the ingredients to it, she, she buys all those super expensive ingredients and she had it for Thanksgiving. It was so good, but so rich. Even this is a little bit rich. And this is just the cream cheese with a little bit of swerve on it. And then the chocolate chips. But again, not real sugar. But it is creeping up on my, plug your ears, guys. Creeping up on that time of the month for me. Although, the last few months have been weird. I've been getting it, like, quicker and faster and spotting and just a lot of weird things. But I can kind of tell that, because uh, I can tell I'm craving a little bit of sweet stuff. Oh, that is it. And I am so full. But it was a good amount of fat. You had the ranch dressing, the bacon. The Quest pizza was very high in fat. Because you do need enough fat. This diet is 70, 75%. 85, 95, yeah. 75% fat. 20% protein, 5% carb. That's what makes up the 100% value of what, you know, because protein, carbs, and fat is what makes up a day, daily value of your food, food intake. So that's how we do it or whatever. And that was enough fat. I mean, the cream cheese, the lily chocolate chips were high in fat, the ranch dressing, the chips were high in fat, the pizza was high in fat, the guacamole... <laughs> So a nice source of fat. I got a nice source of fat and calories there. And exactly 20 carbs. Might have been 21 because of the creamer here, but that's okay. I keep it right between 20 to... If I go over, it's like 23 is the most. Like maybe three. But all right, you guys. I am going to get going. I hope you guys enjoyed this What's Up Wednesday with me. I hope you got something yummy to eat. I hope it was keto. And I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. Um, I do appreciate any and all prayers for what we're going through right now. Um, and, you know, some happy birthdays to Jennifer down below. I'd really appreciate it. You'll see she comes in all the time in comments. So whatever you'll see, it's Jenny. Uh, well, I wrote it on the Jennifer Krasinski. Um, down below. But just wish her a happy belated birthday. I'd appreciate it. And anybody else that had a birthday on the same day or today or tomorrow, happy birthday to you guys. And other than that, I'm going to get going. I love all of you guys very much, but remember, God loves you more. He definitely does, and so let's give ourselves to him. We need to give ourselves to God and do what he needs of us because he's offering us a kingdom, a kingdom. So let's live our life the best that we can. Be good to everybody and, you know, call your friends, call your family. Don't forget about them because life is short. It's very, very short. You don't want to live with regret because that's what I have right now that I'm dealing with. So I love all of you guys very much. Everybody take care. God bless. And I will see each and every one of you in my very next upload. And I was just about to get off. Shut this thing off. And I would have missed telling you guys this amazing news. Yep, we're coming up here on almost two months. But on December 10th for my birthday, which was the 14th, I got to go to L.A., California and meet the legendary Sylvester Stallone. And I didn't just meet him, I did a meet and greet, and I got to give him a kiss, and I got his autograph. Check out this kiss. Amazing. And I have his signature tatted right here on me. I know I'm far away from the camera, so I'm going to stick it right up here for you guys on the screen so you guys can see it. Done with all the tropical flowers because he lives in Miami, and that's his actual signature. Amazing. I can't believe I didn't tell you guys that. That is just crazy. Crazy. But finally, I got to tell you guys. I love you guys. Take care and God bless.